Gustavo, the floor is yours. Thank you for your attention. I want to thank Lekne for inviting uh, me for this talk. Here we're going to talk about uh, the influence of IEDF. You know that uh, this is the uh, Internet Engineering Task Force, uh, the main entity that standardized the protocols of Internet that we all promote at these meetings. Why is it that IEDF pays attention to IoT? Because IoT is a new technology. It's a disruptive technology that started operating uh, in the early 2000, 2005 more accurately. And IETF saw the need to emphasize the quality uh, that the IoT devices could be connected to the internet. You may say, well, but the protocols are already there. We have the IP, we have the, all the stacks for the IoT. Uh, devices to connect. The problem of the o IoT uh, devices is the restrictive devices. In that slide, we have an RFC, uh, RFC 7228, where IETF uh, declares how they are. They are very small devices, the so-called restricted uh, devices with little memory, little resources that consume a little energy power and that typically communicate wirelessly with low consumption and with a lo at a low speed and low uh, reach. Then we're going to see some long reach. And those are the IoT devices. But essentially, IETF was worried because the payloads, the payloads of the devices, the messages are small. Remember that for us to send messages in those restricted networks, the packets must be s small. What happens with a small packet? Well, that the protocols, the internet protocols declared by IETF do not fit in those small sizes. So we need to adapt them so that those small packets may be, may transport uh, UDP, TCP uh, uh, packets, so messages. So IETF uh, is concerned about those uh, IoT problems and started putting together new protocols or adapting existing protocols for them to fit in these small devices. So this is a slide where we included the areas and uh, the task forces of, uh, of our IoT. We are familiar with them. And we are also going to present some protocols or some actions that uh, of the IRTF, the uh, Internet Research Task Force, where that also involve some of these aspects, for instance, uh, coin and thing to thing. So here we included a sketch of the task forces and the areas that correspond in IETF that have some connection to IoT. And you have the group of app applications like Core, CBOR, and ASTF, the internet area with uh, IP Wave working group, uh, LWIG 6 digit, uh, LP1 6 low, the security area such as Coast, Rat, Teep, Lake, Ace, and Suite, the operations area that is a new area that was created recently by the IEDF and it's called IoT Ops. The routing protocol raw and roll, and the action of IRTF with coin and uh, thing to thing. 
Vamos, voy pasando. So now let's discuss each of the groups and we'll talk about the working areas of these protocols. But uh, considering a, um, a, just a, um, uh, one comment here, we uh, have an account of all the working group and the protocols that have to do with IoT. So if you want to go through them, this is going to be in the website and you'll be able to read it more in detail without having to refer to each of the groups. This is just a small, a uh, short account of what each group does and each protocol for the IoT area and all that here. It, this is very wordy, but let me just tell you briefly what each group does and um, what each technology is all about. So in the case of Sixlow, Sixlow was the first working group, a task force created by IETF applied to IOD because they run into an interesting thing. As we said, the protocols, the normal packets of the internet in general had never, didn't occupy the uh, length of the small messages of the IOT protocols carrying uh, and essentially the, the, the first one that was uh, located was a, a link layer that was called uh, the uh, it was one of the El Palm uh, protocols of the personal area network of low energy. There are several. Bluetooth is the best known of them. And this was the first uh, initial protocol that was launched with the uh, wireless uh, um, uh, protocols. Uh, so the IDF worried about that protocol with only 256 bytes of a complete packet. So no packets uh, for instance, IPv4 or IPv6 may fit there. And in addition to take a load, a transport or an, an, and an app load. So what IETF did was to create a middleware between the link layer and the IP layer that was called Cyclopack. And that uh, term is was then repeated in all the protocols of uh, uh, six low PAN reduces the packet of the IP, it compresses it until it reaches two or three bytes and you can enter them essentially in uh, the first, in 815, but of course there are other link uh, means of communication and the group of uh, Sixlow is working, for instance, in Bluetooth and in some other protocols, even in some other notes that we will mention right away. So, and this, this was the first and the main one, and uh, so we created putting in small packets the internet protocols and they chose for that purpose they chose the IPv6 protocol and there they give room to the IPv6 protocol if we use biotech with uh, the IETF protocols we are going to send IPv6 uh, packets and not IPv4 IPv4 was left out of biotech in this declaration Another protocol also applied uh, to 802.15.4 was when the IEEE thought of changing the scheme of the link uh, layer to a contingency network as a wireless networks in particular to a network that would have some time of deterministic. Carlos Andres, the, the, the uh, previous speaker, talked about the industrial IoT. Well, the IEEE protocol 802.15.4 TISH, 6 TISH, that's a real name, establishes a link layer in, in, that is 
slotted with um, time slots where the uh, small devices put their uh, messages in those time slots so that it is deterministic. So we know when the message starts and finishes in origin and destination. So the IETF has this new mode of communication of IEEE appeared. It produces another mode that is what we know as 802.15.4e or 6 dish. That would be its real name. Other, oh, recently, in recent years, there are other forms of communication have appeared in the physical layer, and these are the LP1, the low power wide area networks. These are modes of communication, low energy for small devices, but in this case, they are no longer closed areas as the, the uh, one, but protocols such as 64101, LoRa, LoRa1, and, uh, and these, uh, and uh, NBIOT, uh, mobiles have six, uh, been su quite successful. There are many IoT apps, applications that are based on this, and they their advantage is that they differentiate from 802.15.4 that they have a long range, kilometers, 5, 10, 50 kilometers, some of them, some of these uh, 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 modes of communication that the packets can reach. That's a lot. So, but of course, in communications or in networks, there's nothing new, no, no magic. It just, you, you obtain a long range with a small power. When I put a low bandwidth, low velocity, low speed with small packets, there's, that's the only way you can do it. So there is, the problem is still there of putting IPv6 packets inside the small packets packets that sometimes reach 10 bytes, much less than the 256 of the previous one. So IETF is working in the, these protocols to be able to put inside the small packets the IPv6 protocol. Well, let me go to other areas of work, other protocols in the internet area. LWIG, that uh, is uh, the lightweight implementation guidance for, 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 for lightweight guides. Uh, it's a working group, a task force that uh, collects uh, experiences uh, of people implementing IP stacks in uh, dis de devices with no restriction. So mm, there, it's a group uh, that focuses only in techniques that are used to with, uh, uh, devices. That's another work uh, task force. And there's another task force that was created, and this group has, the wor the have com has completed the work it was discontinued a couple of years ago. It, it's the IP wave that speaks of the communication of IoT on mobile devices, vehicles, vehicle against vehicle and vehicle against infrastructure. It describes or promotes and develops protocols to achieve the communications in this type on mobiles. This group has already worked and uh, did, uh, uh, did quite a few RFCs and quite a few drafts. It is still available in RTF, although the group is closed already. As to the routing group, routing task force, there is one of the groups is the raw group 
of uh, uh, the wireless uh, of the reliable and available wireless technology that uh, provides high reliability and availability for connect IP connectivity through a wireless uh, means on in critical situations. Normally, the wireless and IoT have low yield, low performance, and they may also suffer losses and attenuations of, uh, in when there's difficult uh, communication. So this raw group tries to focus on looking for solutions of, uh, to improve the reliability. This is a new group and it is still underway. They're working and there are no RFCs yet. Then we have the RAL group that is also quite an old group that is the routing over low power lossy networks. They describe several routing solutions for the uh, low power and lossy networks. Uh, there is uh, that uh, loose. Uh, um, not uh, networks that are not reliable. When we have that sort of networks and we want to put together a routing protocol, you know that uh, th those protocols are difficult to implement. SBF or any of those uh, uh, internal uh, routing methods are difficult to implement in IoT. Therefore, IETF developed a special group, the role group, to find methods for routing for IoT. And that method has been completely developed and it's being used and it's re they are represented in several RFCs that are in this uh, role group. They are available both for the main uh, RPL uh, protocol and also for an MPL protocol for multicast networks. We have the area of application Also with protocols of IETF or IOT, essentially, it's a core group. The constrained restful environments for IRT, IOT. Remember that the devices are very small. You can't put very large uh, layers that may encompass what we use in the internet. So they have defined a protocol that's called core that is that focuses on restricted devices with a subset this is based on HTTP and there is a subset of all the functions of HTTP that we typically use there are only four or five primitive that are used in these protocols they are very simple very light and they may be installed in these small devices that have small memory this area is also absolutely developed and there are many applications to install to do this kind of communication of uh, with cyclopam with rpl or with roll and with core that sets the basis of uh, the communication in iot and that is done at present well there was also an announcement this is a group with a more accessory technology this is the cyber group uh, that takes a communication technology or syntaxis technology that's called JSON, well known by those of you who work in IT, and they do a sort of JSON apply. Uh, IoT applied JSON, where they add uh, the binary communication. JSON is a uh, free text, it's a, it's a plain text, while Sivor is a protocol in which we 
they take the JSON format and they do it binary and add some syntaxes for IoT. That is also available and being used. This is just for the core messages to be a bit shorter, a bit lighter. Another important issue in IoT is semantics. It, semantic interoperability, that is, that all the devices should speak the same language. The same language in terms of data code. That's a problem. Interoperability, a, 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 a complete uh, semantic interoperability has not been reached. and. Uh, the IDF has added uh, this new group, the IC ASDF is a new group, not to, to create a new semantic, but uh, to uh, combine semantics of other people, of other groups that are working and to do a sort of summary of semantics. For instance, with the TDUTRG, with the WISHI, the work on IoT semantic, hypermedia interoperability. Mm, uh, that is another way. This is a new group, and it, they've also achieved some things. Well, we are reaching the end. IoT operations. This is a group that essentially works with operational things related with IoT devices. Uh, several operational groups in IoT where they promote the, uh, the safe, secure, and reliable operations. The security issues that are also important IDF has worked on uh, the security of IoT with several protocols. The, the main one is COS, the CBER, Object Signing and Encryption. That's the baseline uh, uh, protocol for encryption in all the IoT chain. With this, it is possible to do encrypting, to create uh, signatures, and to do all the combination in all the IoT security that is also available. There is a protocol, an accessory protocol groups uh, that work um, with the procedures of authentication in devices. Uh, in different uh, networks um, uh, with uh, some authentication networks that are absolutely reliable. That is done by RAFs. And uh, also the uh, remote attestation procedure. That's a protocol to provide a se um, security to the secure environments in the nodes. This is a protocol that speaks, that uh, discusses those issues. Hello. We also have the Lake Protocol. El protocolo Lake. The Lake Protocol, which is a group that deals and tries to make the OSCORs, the object security for constraint restful environments. The cores in the application layer, which are called secure protocols. So the lake protocols tries to ensure in the standardization of the secure protocols to use lightweight protocols. Remember, we are always with restricted devices. So then we have the suit protocol, which is other software updates. Remember that the devices are located remotely, sometimes inaccessible to do a physical upgrade. So the suit group tries to 
define remote software solutions for small devices and to do this with security so that the software update and the new software that is loaded to the devices also has the necessary security in order to prevent attacks. And then we have the ACE group, which is the group in charge of in charge of authentication and authorization for restricted environments for secure transport end to end and does this for restricted devices all these protocols the security protocols are copies of the security protocols available in normal internet but created to be lightweight protocols that can be transmitted and loaded and processed by the smaller devices and finally the protocols corresponding to the IRTF for example the thing to thing group which is quite old already it was always concerned with things related to research and to the IoT layers to do a more secure and reliable IoT that is more accessible and with a better deployment. So this is a group that promotes IoT protocols. It is very active. It is receives a lot of uh, queries from researchers and people who work in IoT. This group is normally present at all the IETF meetings and is one of the most active groups and carries out a lot of actions. And this is not only protocols. The IRTF doesn't do RFCs, but if they do so, well, they do this in association with the ITF group, but it does have valuable researchers. And finally, the COIN group, which is computing in the network research group. Carlos Andres referred to cloud computing. He referred to this when he spoke about cloud computing. So taking processing layers or computing layers to those smaller devices. So not only those that are cloud-based and big data, but also in the intermediate stages in what we call the gateways or the gatekeepers. Carlos Andres spoke about the fog and we can even take this to the smallest devices. So this group work, works in the promotion of that way of doing computing and processing things in the entire network. And they came up with a peculiar name which is cloud continuum, which is a term, in, term used for that type of computing. So this is from the edge through to the cloud. This is also another task force of the IRTF, and which is producing quite a lot. So exactly 30 minutes. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm Gustavo Mercado and I continue working on this with Maria Ines Robles. Maria Ines Robles is from Argentina. She works in Finland and is co-chair of the role group of IETF. There are two women that are chairs at the IETF and she's one of them. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Gustavo, for the excellent presentation. We have a couple of seconds left for questions from the participants. Any remote questions? No, no remote questions. So then, any questions? So please come up to the microphone. 
Hello. Can we consider that the low power systems and protocols such as Nora and Sysfox could be less vulnerable to attacks? I'd, could these be less vulnerable to attacks, the low po power options? The MP1 protocols currently, normally, are very often proprietary, Cisco's proprietary. It, LoRa 1 is more open, but is also proprietary. It's not like the IEEE protocols that are open. In the case of Sysfox and LoRa, the protocol that is already intrinsic, the package with the link also includes the data part is already included with end-to-end -end excription. So part of that group is also in charge of encryption, and this does provide a certain level of security. Any more questions? Thank you very much, Gustavo. A big round of applause to for our speaker. and. We now close block three of the presentations of LACNIC's technical forum. So I'd like to give a big round of applause to all the speakers who were with us today.